legendary speedy ninja and political figure president chip zanoff returns once again to deliver swift and relentless offense in guilty or strive in this video we're going to cover chip's archetype key normals and specials and the general game plan to get you on your way to playing chip in guilty gear strive season two so let's get right to it noobs let's get straight away to the archetype of chip chip is the speedster of guilty gear strive chip outclasses every character in the game by having the fastest movement speed and overall mobility chip is the only character in guilty gear strive to have three jumps making him very tricky to catch additionally He's the only other character that can double jump after his air dash as well due to his triple jump and lastly being the fastest in the game allows chip the ability to punish things that every other character in guilty gear strive cannot rounding chip's gameplay out as the fastest character once again in the game so now that we've talked about his archetype let's take a look at his key normals for starters we have standing k or 5k this is chip's overall strongest normal on approaches it's six frames and it chains into itself. This move sets up not only Chip's pressure, but also his knockdown game as it chains into Crouching K as well. Standing K is a priority to your game, so be sure to familiarize yourself with how to use this normal. Next up, we have Crouching K or 2K. This is Chip's quickest low option at five frame startup, making it one of the fastest normals at a low in all of Guilty Gear Strive. This helps sets up Chip's knockdown game because it does go into Crouching Dust or his sweep, if you will. This normal attack does lack range, but Chip's speed more than can make up for that, which is totally fine. You can also use Crouching Kick to interrupt your opponent's offense as well. Next up, we have Far Slash. Far Slash is a great approach tool due to its range and speed of nine frames. One of the fastest normals in Guilty Gear. That's a slash button. This normal is great for starting the round against a vast majority of the cast. It's easily one of Chip's best whiff punishment tools in his entire kit. This is definitely a normal you want to familiarize yourself with on how to use properly. Next we have Close Slash. This is Chip's strongest up close attack as it is plus one frame on block. It's great when used in delay strings during pressure as it has many other options to string into. It also has the benefit of being jump cancelable and dash cancelable, allowing you to change up your approaches and your offense against your opponents. Again, another go-to move you want to get familiar with when you get up close against your opponents. Next on our key normals list, we have Standing Heavy Slash or 5H. This is one of Chip's best long range normal attacks to poke at your opponent with due to its disjointed hitbox at the end of the animation. This move is also great for anti-airing your opponents. The disjointed hitbox again comes into play here, allowing you to do quite a lot of damage on the anti-air. This button may seem a little tricky to use at first, but it is definitely one worth learning how to master. And next up, you know we have to go over this button. This is the Guilty Gear Strive Classic. This is the all-purpose, almighty 4-punch or 6P. This is your go-to anti-air. It is also good as a counter poke on the ground to your opponent's mid-high attacks. Four Punch is definitely the button you want to familiarize yourself with because it is a very important normal to know how to use in all of Guilty Gear Strive. And lastly, on our normals list, we have Jumping Heavy Slash. This is your go-to jumping attack on both regular jumps and air dash approaches. The Jump H does hit twice and it's fairly easy to use. It also has the benefit of being jump cancelable, so you can use it to alter your approach as well. Jumping Heavy Slash is your main go-to jumping attack. Now let's take a look at chips special moves first up on our list we have alpha blade horizontal this move can also be done in the air and this is chips grounded cross-up attack despite its speed it's a fairly strong cross-up option especially after a knockdown this is not something you'll catch yourself using very very often so use it sparingly next up we have alpha blade diagonal this can also be done in the air the same as horizontal alpha blade it crosses up just like horizontal alpha blade. The difference here is on the ground version, Chip retains his aerial options such as double jump and air dash and all his attack buttons. In the corner, Chip will always bounce away from the wall, allowing him to set up more combo potential and or pressure potential. This is yet another solid option to open up your opponent. 
Next we have Beta Blade. This is Chip's reversal option that is strike invincible. It also can be done in the air. Not too much to say here. This is just his DP option. Use with caution. Next we have Gamma Blade. Chip sends a clone that will attack the opponent. This is very good when you've conditioned your opponent as the move is plus nine on block. On hit, Gamma Blade causes a tumble state into a soft knockdown. In the mid screen, this allows Chip to catch him to his opponents. In the corner, the tumble state allows Chip to actually get a follow up combo, allowing him to break the wall and maximize his damage. Unfortunately, Chip's clone is an extension of himself and should the clone get hit, it deals damage to both. So use it with caution. Next up on our special moves, we have Resho. Resho is a safe poke and pressure tool with a large cancel window for delayed follow-ups. This is the start of what's known as Chip's Rekka series. Resho helps to offer delayed pressure strings for Chip when approaching offense. The next follow-up to Resho is Rokusai. Rokusai is the follow to Resho that hits low. Use this in your delayed strings when you feel your opponent will try to interrupt your pressure. And last from the Rekka tree from Resho is Senshu. This is Chip's overhead option from Resho. It can be done after either Resho or Rokusai, making it a little tricky for your opponent to know which way to defend. This move causes a soft knockdown on hit and ground bounces on counter hit, allowing Chip a follow up combo. Senshu is very unsafe on blocks, so be sure to use it with caution. Next, we have Genrozan. This is Chip's command grab. It deals great damage and leaves the opponents very close to Chip for meaty pressure. Due to how slow the command grab is, be sure to use it after you've conditioned your opponents. And lastly, we have Shuriken. Shuriken is essentially Chip's zoning tool. It has a pretty useful angle for zoning characters who have weak mobility such as Nagoryuki or Potemkin. As good as Shuriken may seem as a zoning tool, it is not a real projectile. Your opponents can actually hit the Shuriken away, thus rendering the Shuriken a little useless. So use it sparingly. And now we're going to take a quick look at Chip's overdrives. First up on the list is Zansei Roga. Zansei Roga does the most damage of all of Chip's overdrives. However, this overdrive will reset the opponent to mid screen without breaking the wall. It can also be done in the air to cash out damage on your air combos. Next up is Banki Messai, and it sports a little bit of projectile invincibility. This is your main grounded overdrive to break the wall for the majority of your combos. The damage on it may be a little bit low. However, it does grant Chip a hard knockdown situation post wall break. Now that we've covered the key normals, let's take a look at Chip's game plan. Now let's start with the neutral game. Chip, much like any other speedster, is most effective in the close ranges. Luckily for Chip, this is no problem due to his run speed and overall mobility. You'll be approaching mostly with standing kick, crouching kick, and far slash. All these normals are fast and provide Chip ways to safely end strings with Resho. Learning how to utilize Chip's speed is essential for playing neutral. Now let's take a quick look at Chip's pressure game. Once you've gotten in the close ranges, Chip's pressure begins to shine due to the sheer speed of his attacks. Your goal in the close ranges is to do the following. Fish for the knockdown with your sweep in order to start your pressure game. Counter hit your opponent's attempt to interrupt your pressure with delayed strings via resho and your normals. Sneak in overheads such as standing dust or four plus kick and sneaking command grabs and normal throws to keep them honest. As for Chip's corner game, this is where Chip can get a little tricky against his opponents. How can Chip get tricky with it? You ask my fellow noobs. The way you're going to get there is combining these three things, his throws, his sweep and Gamma Blade. 
all three of these things work in conjunction with each other to make Chip's knockdown game in the corner pretty scary. We're going to kickstart this with his throws. Chip has enough time to run up and hit them off the ground with the sweep attack and cancel into Gamma Blade. By canceling into Gamma Blade, this leaves Chip at a significant advantage against his opponents. This significant advantage allows Chip to run up and continue pressure. Here's some examples that you can utilize from his throw. The same thing can be achieved from chip sweep. Post sweep in a combo, you're going to now press forward and heavy slash, canceled into Gamma Blade. Here, this leaves us at the same advantage as his throw. One of the greatest advantages that Chip has here is that he gets to maintain the corner, and in addition to maintaining the corner, Chip is fairly safe from a lot of the reversal options in the game. Be sure to combine your pressure game alongside your corner game for maximum potency with Chip in the corner. In conclusion, Chip is one of the premier speedster characters in Guilty Gear Strive. With his high mobility and overall mix-up potential, Chip is a great character for those looking for a tricky character to play. So if you're looking to play the fastest man alive, Chip might just be for you in Guilty Gear Strive Season 2. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoy content like this, please be sure to leave a like and let me know in the comments below. Catch you in the next one, noobs.